Well, yesterday was the day of the Doctor, but this is a very important day for the Doctor too, because this, I think, is the first day of the next 50 years. Don't you think? Now, we have the people who made last night's episode uh, for you to talk to and listen to um, at this session. So let me bring onto the stage first the director of the Day of the Doctor, Nick Huron. <laughs> Come and sit on my sofa. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And the man who has been scaring us all for the last few years, the showrunner of Doctor Who, Mr. Stephen Moffat. <laughs> Come and sit down. Oh. <laughs> and Doctor Who's most enigmatic, most brilliant <laughs> companion, Miss Jenna Coleman. <laughs> Come in, Hello. sit down. And the eleventh Doctor himself, Mr. Matt Smith. <laughs> So, last night, how was it for you, Matt? Uh, it was very exciting to see it in 3D, my enormous chin. Uh, <laughs> attacking, attacking <laughs> the unconscious public. No, it was, it was thrilling, you know. Big TB back in the episode. Absolutely, that, 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 yes, that was yes. cool, that big, yeah, there was loads of fun, I think, fan sort of details in there that, that, that made it very special. And how is it for you, Jenna, watching this thing? Finally, you're allowed to share all its pleasures with us. I just said this. This is the first panel where we can actually answer some questions. We can actually talk about it. Um, really exciting to see it. It was kind of, um, for me, I think um, the, big, the big great reveal was listening to the audience's reaction with Tom Baker. For me, that was the uh, kind yeah. of great, it was great like, moment. Ooh. It was, could it, could it be? Yeah. Oh, uh, I've never been so tense in my life. I, I think, um, yeah, it was, it was great and it was exciting and all that, but I, I, my, 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 I think my taxi was about four minutes late and, I, uh, and from that point on, I was in a state of tension where I couldn't actually reach the floor with my feet. I was so wound up. Um, so, uh, but it was, it was thrilling. It was just uh, amazing and, uh, and, uh, and someday in the future I may actually relax about it, but I think it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't quite believe we're allowed to talk about it. We, are, fact, we I, are. Has anyone not seen it? I'm very worried about spoilers. <laughs> somebody, somebody you haven't. <laughs> with nobody your fingers in say your anything <laughs> about the 50th. Sorry. <laughs> and Nick, how did you feel knowing that this episode was being beamed out to millions of people across the world? Yeah, well, it's, it was just an honour to be... Uh, part of flying the TARDIS on her 50th um, alongside everybody. And I think there was a, a tremendous spirit from everybody to do whatever they could to make it the best possible event. And everybody's been so kind running up to it. That's well, an interesting thing, actually, because uh, I suppose, uh, uh, we were saying this yesterday, weren't we? We come on these panels and we all sound so bullish and confident about everything, <laughs> and we're not really. We're absolutely... Bricking it. All I've, the never, time. I've never ever seen you so tense as yesterday. Never. I was, no, I, I, I was. I couldn't speak to people properly. No. No. Yeah. Which is rare. <laughs> <laughs> but you did watch. You didn't have to watch it through a crack in the door, did you, Stephen? No. Like, well, they put me in the middle of an audience in an act of unprecedented cruelty. <laughs> I, I was next to a, a member of the public who, who's, who, who turned to me and said very kindly, "Don't worry. I, I, I won't make any noises or anything." I was like, "Oh, I will." <laughs> <laughs> Let's see a moment from last night's episode that I know in this room made everybody's jaw hit the floor. I dream about where I'm going. She always laughs at that. But you're not going anywhere, you're just wandering about. That's not true. Not anymore. I have a new destination. My journey is the same as yours, the same as anyone's. It's taken me so many years, so many lifetimes, but at last I know where I'm going. Where I've always been going. Home. The long way round. You 
could really feel something in this room while that was. There's a yeah. lady on the front row dressed as a Dalek who is oh, wiping no. the tears we, we from her eyes. Saying. We know how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Is that how it was for you? Yeah, look at that. Oh. Oh, so I kind of want to give you a hug. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But then it's funny as, as like an actor, because I, I was just saying to Jenna then, one can't help but go, why am I pulling such a stupid face <laughs> at the end? <laughs> I'm like this. <laughs> um, uh, no, but it's, it's exciting, isn't it? Seeing all the doctors on a cloud looking at Gallifrey. I mean, it doesn't really get any better than that, does it? Like, <laughs> and seeing Big TB with that voice and still mad as a box of <laughs> lunatic frogs. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, also just like being that, that last shot of all, all the doctors just makes me really proud. It's like I feel really sort of like there's a real camaraderie amongst doctors, actually. Uh, yes, we have our own group and we meet for tea every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about wibbly wobbly, timey wimey things. <laughs> Do you think it might happen? I can imagine you all in some kind of gentleman's club discussing those things that Absolutely. only doctors know. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> This also, this feels like a new beginning for Doctor Who, this Stephen. He was a man, until yesterday, yeah. he was a man who'd walked away from a battlefield. Yeah. Now he seems to be a man who might be looking for a, a lost home. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a new chapter in his story. It is. He's, uh, he's got the possibility of going home. Uh, as he says, the long way around. Now, I suppose we all know that if he ever got there, he'd be awfully bored, but, and he'd run away again. It's not like every episode he's going to land the TARDIS pop his head out there and say, nope, not Gallifrey, close it again and go off. You know, we are going to continue to have, essentially, him fighting monsters. Uh, so, but it just gives him, a, it gives him a little story, which is good and it's important. And I like to know a little bit about what's going on in that madman's head. A little bit, not too much. But weirdly, this has been, um, I mean, let's big it up because it deserves it. Uh, this is, this is, for a show that didn't need any kind of relaunch, this has been a relaunch. 10.2 on the overnights mm. is preposterous. No, nothing gets that on the overnights. Um, and how was this for you, Jenna? We talked about kind of doctors meeting each other, but what about this thing that we couldn't talk about yesterday, about your encounter with Billy Piper and two companions? The encounter was off screen, not on screen. But obviously, you know, we didn't want to give anything away about Billy and the moment, but um, I have to say, filming, it was, it was really great. Um, you know, Matt is really good friends with Billy, and it's, it's, you know, she's got such a, a great energy, and she's a wonderful actress, so it was great kind of for us all in between takes, but the companions never got that, that moment. And yet Clara got to be sort of in charge of the doctors, didn't she, for a moment? Clara's kind of always showing I like them. to think so, however. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how, how true that is, but um, uh, yeah, I, just running around with the three of them was... true. It's true. It, was, uh, it's true. Was, was <laughs> What's going so on? There, sorry, <laughs> there was just, there's a very funny line in the Christmas no! episode coming up. Sorry, that's quite fitting. Sorry, sorry, we, we shouldn't whisper uncouthly <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, but isn't there, Moth? There's a very funny line about Clara Oswald, which it, it, it is actually pertinent <laughs> to what you were saying. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Which, again, you we'll, can't say that and not say the line now. Well, I've got to, because but you'll know when you see <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's four of us in a scene. And, uh, is it my version of the chin, kind of? Yeah. That's, is it going to stick with me? Anyway, you'll yeah. have to wait until anyway, Christmas, you're sorry. Right. Another, another enigma to chew over for, for months now. <laughs> See, we don't like saying things that we can talk about. Yeah. We like to go <laughs> so, on to the next bunch of things that. we yes, can talk yeah. about. Nick, what can you tell us uh, about the say, doctors together on set? That clip show there where we asked Matt, and we'd only been filming for three or four days, actually, when we had to shoot the end. And they'd very cleverly found a whole bunch of people to, to be standing there in. And when I was asking Matt to come onto the set and there wasn't <laughs> enough doors, so there are prop men lying on the floor holding the doors open. I'm, I'm describing there'll be a big planet up there and you've got to... <laughs> and Matt's looking around at these other people standing around him who look almost like the doctor there. And I'm <laughs> convincing him, don't worry, this will all be all right. <laughs> but you have to commit, and they absolutely do. And I think it's, you can see through and through with mm. such fantastic work from them. Their commitment is there. But I think we must also give a round of applause to the man who did such a fabulous oh, no, job you. of kind of directing the episode. <laughs> Bravo, <laughs> the group. Really sterling, sterling work. Thank you. It was an honour, absolute honour to be there with everyone. It really was. 
And Stephen, it seemed to me that one of the delightful things about this story, that you would sort of return Doctor Who in a way to its very beginnings. This was an episode about history and science fiction. Well, yeah, I did have sort of impulse to try and do all, Doctor, so all kinds of Doctor Who at once. So it's actually as dark as we get. He is discussing double genocide, after all, cheerfully with himself in a dungeon. But, uh, he is, uh, but we also have complete silliness. He's, he's threatening a rabbit. Uh, and I think the, uh, <laughs> and I think you now know I, I wasn't exaggerating when uh, I said that uh, Matt and David are sublime together, aren't they? Yeah. Um, that, that that scene with the screwdriver, that meeting, it's just. Uh... How was that for, for you, Matt? Because you know David <clears throat> is a doctor who who, is also, who knows as much about Doctor Who as Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm like the sort of the black sheep of the family. <laughs> Literally sort of talking. There's that companion board. I don't know if anyone saw which, which Jenna's on, and we were looking at it, and I sort of was like, who's that? Who's that? And David was like, oh, for God's sake, that's... <laughs> um, uh, oh, it was wonderful. Yeah, he's a lovely man and a wonderful doctor, and it was, um, it's just nice that I sort of get to be part of that history of, of meeting doctors, I'm really pleased. And Tom as well, which was yeah. like, you, you can sort of see in that scene my genuine sort of like schoolboyness. <laughs> I think, going, well, actually it's just, it's, it's number four. So it was, um, yeah, really good. And I think, it, and I mean, it's just thrilling to see old faces come back in Doctor Who, isn't it? I think that's one of the great pleasures of the show. Yeah. Let's have a look at that moment when, again, in this hall, there was a whoop of joy when all the Doctors, past, present and future as well, came together. Oh, yeah. Let's have a look at that clip. Um. <laughs> the calculations alone would take hundreds of years. Oh, hundreds and hundreds, but don't worry. I started a very long time ago. Warning the War Council of Gallifrey. This is the Doctor. You might say I've been doing this all my lives. Good luck. Am I? Ready? Commencing calculation. Turn me there! Across the boundaries that divide one universe from another. I've got to lock onto his coordinates. And for my next trick, I didn't know when I was well off. All 12 of them. No, sir. Ah! All 13! Now. There's a world of possibility in that eyebrow raising, isn't there, Stephen? <laughs> That's going to be the most poured over piece of film in history, that, isn't it? I love that he, uh, he's getting so much credit for less than half his face. <laughs> uh, and less than a second. Uh, well done, Capaldi. <laughs> uh, so, is he going to be a bad tempered doctor? Well, who can say? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly don't want to have an argument with this guy about a script with him. But you, so. couldn't re you couldn't resist it, could you? Uh, it, no, we, we, we had the, the, the point was, uh, sort of, as you know, and as I'm sure many people guessed, was to say there's only going to be three, and then fling as many doctors at the screen by whatever means we could, uh, as, the all, as the doctor at every point in his life, in every chapter of his journey, uh, come together to save Gallifrey. That's what you want. That's what you want to happen. That's the fairy tale moment. I mean, he's had that genocide hanging over him for all that time. I remember th thinking about doing this story and thinking, but maybe, maybe we should <laughs> do that day. And then thinking, if we do it, he won't. I couldn't write the scene where he blows up Gallifrey because I think in the end, what I thought was, I bet he didn't really. I bet he didn't because the doctor wouldn't. He'd get a, he'd find another way. And of course, the moment I put him in the scene, he did. By the way, here's a, here's a, here's a point of uh, personal dweebery. That's the first time you've ever heard William Hartnell say Gallifrey. Of course, it isn't actually William Hartnell. It's a very, very good voice artist, but uh, uh, you, we've never actually heard him say the word Gallifrey. So we finally got William Hartnell saying Gallifrey. Yes, it's a really good use of license <laughs> from Bear <laughs> Money. But, uh, <laughs> Jenna, how do you read these? Let's go back to these eyebrows for a moment, because this is your new leading man appearing on the horizon here. Well, I I've seen the eyebrows in action up close. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a very exciting day. Um, he well, that has... started the gossip, didn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say, say that. without yeah. saying anything at all, other than he has great eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> what are the implications of this for the Doctor? Are you still the 11th Doctor? Matt. Y yes, yes. How uh, does the numbering work now we have seen? Right, well, that's, uh, <coughs> I, I, now, now that I can be slightly more honest about yes. everything, he has no more ever called himself the 11th Doctor than he would call himself Matt Smith. 
The doctor doesn't know what we, uh, off the top of his head how many regenerations. He never says it. Uh, I think he's, he once said it in the lodger. He said 11th, uh, mm. uh, uh, referring to his face. If you worry about such things, and I do, because I am like you lot, um, then I, I specifically said John Hurt's doctor uh, d doesn't use the title. Therefore, uh, 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 he's in his 11th body, but uh, he's, in his, his 12th body, but he's the 11th doctor. However, there is no such character, and never has been, as the 11th doctor. It's just the doctor. That's what he calls himself. So it doesn't, the, the numbering doesn't matter, except for those lists that you and I have been making <laughs> for many years. And I was worried about what we'd all do with the diagrams and the, just the, the mind palace of Doctor Who. So I've given you the sort of option of not counting them numerically. He's the war oh, doctor. What do you think, Matt? Although I would like to point out, I do like being the 11th doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just because just I like the number 11. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Well, you are. You are yeah, the end of good. Let's, <laughs> let's see a clip from last night in which we got to see regeneration that I don't think any of us were quite suspecting. Let's see that clip, please. <laughs> yes. Of course. I suppose it makes sense. Wearing a bit thin. I hope the ears are a bit less conspicuous this time. We've had teams of people analysing this forensically. We are sure we can see Christopher Eccleston's eyes. I uh, well, he's regenerating. That's just what there. happens. <laughs> so does this mean... I'll ask this numbering question again. Let's forget numbers. But are John Hurt and Paul McGann the same incarnation of the Doctor? No, not at all. No. Uh, how could they be? Paul McGann turns into John Hurt. So, no, they're not the same incarnation. OK, well, that's one thing we've absolutely said. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. You saw that right in the Night down. of the Doctor. Well, you haven't you been know, paying attention, Doctor Sweet. No, no, I have. <laughs> Anyone could have told you that. I just that could be some kind of uh, some variation. No, no he's, the, uh, no, th no uh, he's used up another regeneration. Or I expect he'll be in trouble shortly. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't break rules laid down in the deadly assassin. We're just going to have to take it off the air shortly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a l Sorry. <laughs> you were sitting still. <laughs> How could you drop something upwards when you're sitting still? It's been a childhood affliction, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's how clumsy he is. He's clumsy when he's not in motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, 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 <laughs> well, okay. where is this journey going to take him next? We are we are looking forward to the Christmas special. Is there anything at all that you can tease us with or lie to us about? Um, oh God, Both. I, I haven't got used to retaining and distorting information about Christmas yet. I mean, there's a regeneration. That's what you get There's a regeneration. There's gonna, Matt uh, regenerates. We're, um, <laughs> we're going to take a, a deeply popular uh, hero and kill him mm. uh, at Christmas. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I really, I, I'm sure you'll all enjoy that. Um, <laughs> it will be the culmination of all of uh, the Eleventh Doctor's stories and features, and I will say this, um, Matt Smith's finest ever performance as the Doctor, and possibly the finest performance ever by a Doctor. He is absolutely amazing. <laughs> now, and Matt, he will I... break your hearts and ruin your Christmases. Yeah. I read the other day that your <laughs> mum had persuaded you not to leave. Doctor Who. I don't think that was a yeah. journalist. My mum is in the audience today. Well, She's really annoyed that I'm leaving Doctor Who. It's a general. What? What? Hi, mum. Where are you? Hey. Hi. Hello, Mrs. Smith. Stand up. Stand up. There's hey. me, mum. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so how did she make her case? I know then? you well, know that Doctor Who has a hot mum. I mean, <laughs> it's, just, it's just frightening, isn't it? How did she make the case? Mm. Just by begging me not to do it and trying to persuade me not to do it. And, um, yeah, but it's, oh, gosh, it's, it's so hard to leave and you, you constantly think you've made a terrible decision. But I don't know. It's, uh, I've had a good innings and I think you've got to be grateful for what you've done. 
So, I, and I very much am. And I'm really pleased with Christmas. I think it was a wonderful script. And, uh, you know, I sort of wish I'd, I'd had another year with Jen. That would have been nice. I think, I think we could have really evolved together. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I hand over to the great Mr. Capaldi and I'm very excited to see what he does. Even with a, a one look, and you go, wow, what's he thinking? What's, I think it does, you know, I think he has such sort of stuff as a doctor. So it's, it's quite sad, though. It was quite sad to leave. Yes, articulate as ever. <laughs> and without telling us anything, anything that would spoil anything for us, yeah. how did you feel at that moment of handing on this part? Um, annoyed. Really. <laughs> <laughs> sort of annoyed and <laughs> bereaved. I, it's, it's strange. It's a strange thing. Weirdly, I said to David, when did I see him? I saw David, we did Graham Norton, yeah. and just before we went on, and I said, I never thought, mate, I never thought to think how hard it was for you, because I was just so nervous about coming in. And he was like, well, of course you didn't. And you, it's weird, you just don't really think, it's such a hard thing to let go of, because it is such a sort of family experience when you're in it, all this sort of stuff, and yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's what the show's about. It gets a new lick of paint, gets a new character, a new TARDIS, and you know, that's why we're here celebrating 50 years. Yeah, but you, you retain the title, Matt. You're yes. still the Doctor. You never stop being the Doctor. But you know that. Can you still sign things, the Doctor? Yes. I think yes, I think so. <laughs> can yeah. you? Don't you, like, have to put your number, like, 11 or, like, something? No, no you don't. You're the Doctor. There's a very small number of people who really you know, know how to tackle a Dalek, and you're one of them. It's really sad. I've gone to sign checks before and put the <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Then it really have was time not? for you to leave, mate. <laughs> yeah. And like, have, they been, have they been accepted? No. <laughs> and then, like, really sadly as well, like when me and David were sort of making the, uh, when we were making the anniversary special, I'd start like signing off to him, 11, and he'd sign off 10, and it was just, <laughs> yeah, it was really, really ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the part, though, that you can leave behind, really, is it? There'll always be a, yeah. a part of you that's connected with it. I'm really it? proud of it. I'm really proud that I've, that I've got to do it and have a go. And, uh, and I've come through it, you know. I, I didn't even know if I'd get through a year. You know, you don't know if they're going to give you the elbow. So I'm, 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 I'm pleased that I did four. I'm very, mm. very pleased. And what about you, Stephen? How is that? What, what feelings does that moment of transition stir in you? Well, it's, it's not the fiction that stirs anything in you, it's the fact. And my mate Matt's leaving the show, and, uh, and we joined together. Yeah. And yeah. we've had... I mean, this is the last day that we will do panels together about Doctor Who. Oh. Um, and that's... Wow. Uh, so, uh, what's it like uh, losing Matt? I think every... Dig as deep as you like, uh, talk to as many people as you want. You won't find anyone with a negative story about Matt Smith. Not one single person. Um, Marcus Wilson always says he tries to get Matt as early as possible. I'm sorry about this, Matt. We can tell you this now. <laughs> as early as possible to the set before he's needed because the crew move faster if he's there. <laughs> he comes bounding onto the set every day joyously. <laughs> Um, uh, he hugs everybody, he says hello to everybody, he remembers the names of everybody, everybody's kids. He's been such an extraordinary ambassador for the show. And while he's, he's as you can see, he's not really like the Doctor, um, he, but the, uh, he's, he's quite a different man. All that, all that eccentricity was performance. But he's some, I, I can honestly say that the way uh, Matt carried himself as the Doctor is something of which the Doctor would be immensely proud. <laughs> and it, <laughs> Thank you. Very <laughs> kind. Thank you. Yeah. I can't believe it's our last panel. Right, Second last, one, one more. It's really one depressing. More. I know. I love panels. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, talk sure. about yourself for like an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's like open group therapy. It's <laughs> <laughs> and how much are you going to miss him, Jenna? Oh, my goodness. Um, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> how long have we got there? Um, it's a straight... Uh, it's it's going to be... Um, 
It's what, it's what, again, it's what the show is. I can't quite contemplate it because we're not there yet. And what will happen is we'll go off on a, on a different journey. But I think what you kind of realize is it's, it's this kind of amazing moment of time. And you just realize you're never going to get that again together. And I think mm. so much of the last episode for me felt like that and felt like, you know, I'm going to be 60, 60 years old and I always look back on you know, my time with my first doctor and, and with Matt and it's just a very special, um, and, it, and it just, you know, it feels so soon as well, so yeah. soon between the two of us. So I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, he's just, I think he's one of the greatest, greatest doctors and the best actor I've ever, ever worked with. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> no, it's too nice. <laughs> You'll know he didn't hug my legs. <laughs> no, you see that? Your the legs aren't as pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and how is he to direct Nick? There is not a moment. Matt doesn't give it 100% and with great pleasure, and it inspires everybody on the set. I was, I was going to say, though, that there was an amazing connection between Matt and David, because when David came back and put on that suit once again, it's like about Matt leaving. There was this sense of what this huge thing is that you are as a doctor. Um, and there was a real connection between you two of we've, we've shared this experience yeah. together. Um, and you both have that same thing of having left it behind, having have to say enough is enough. Yeah. Um, but it was great to work, absolutely great to work with Matt. Yeah. And what does it say to you about the power of Doctor Who itself? This extraordinary kind of unexpected concept that seems bigger than anybody involved mm. with it, bigger than anything we could imagine, almost like a kind of life of itself, <laughs> isn't it? It's like a kind of, if it was in Doctor Who, Doctor Who, it would be some kind of powerful entity, wouldn't but, it? But, you know, that's the very essence of the show, and I've, I've always said, you know, the show is the star. That's the thing, you know, and I, I've been lucky enough to sort of, to, to, to drive it, as it were, to fly it. For, uh, for three or four years, but the show is always the thing that people return to, which is why it crosses generations, which is why it will continue and go on and snowball and get bigger, and, and that is the real brilliance of it, I think. I think it's, I think it's the, the basic format of you can travel anywhere in space and time, and who, who wouldn't want to do that? Who wouldn't want to imagine? It, I think that's it, it's the imagination and mm. the kind of the adventure at the heart of it, and there's something so kind of magical and, and human that everybody can relate to, whether it be my grandma or my niece. And, um, and it's kind of infinite. It, it offers up infinite possibilities. You can recast the Doctor. You'll never get bored of seeing somebody enter the TARDIS for the first time. And I think that is why it's, it's lasted for 50 years and will keep on continuing. Mm. Can you imagine life without Doctor Who, Stephen? Imagine that parallel world where it never happened. Oh, What, what would it be like? It wouldn't be as good. I mean, uh, but, but you know, yeah, that's, it's, it's hard to say how we imp talk about the importance of an imaginary hero. Um, but heroes are important. Heroes tell us something about ourselves. Uh, history books tell us who we used to be. Documentaries tell us who we are now. But heroes tell us who we want to be. And a lot of our heroes depress me. But, you know, when they made this particular hero, uh, they didn't give him a gun. They gave him a screwdriver to fix things. They didn't give him a, a tank or a warship or an X-wing fighter. They gave him a, a coal box from which you can call for help. And they didn't give him a superpower or pointy ears or a heat ray. They gave him an extra heart. They gave him two hearts. And that's an extraordinary thing. There will never come a time when we don't need a hero like the Doctor. Happy birthday, Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> now, all of us in this room are going to go on a little bit of an adventure here right now. I want to introduce you to the editor-in-chief of Great. Guinness Lovely. World Records, Mr. Craig Glenday. It gives me great pleasure as a Doctor Who fan to confirm that 1950 GMT last night, right. the day the Doctor was broadcast to 94 countries simultaneously, therefore achieves the official Guinness World Record yes. title for the most broadcasted TV show drama simultaneously in the history of television. So congratulations. Well done, guys. Doctor Who.